Hello, I'm Richard Chambers, Senior Advisor of Risk and Audit at Audiport, and welcome to another in my continuing series, Agents of Change. I'm joined today by Chris Chung. Chris is the Chief Audit Executive of The Doctors Company the nation's largest physician-owned medical malpractice insurer, protecting more than 90,000 doctors nationwide. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thanks for having me. You know, Chris, in one of my previous books, Agents of Change, I made the case that internal auditors have to embrace change and seek to drive value in their organizations. And I define agents of change in the profession is those internal auditors that are catalysts for transformational ideas that create value within the organizations they serve. How do you see that? I mean, what's your view on that, uh, that definition or even internal auditors' role in providing that kind, of, uh, that kind of help for their organizations? Yeah, I think internal audit has a tremendous opportunity to be an agent for change. If you think about internal audit and the function, the practice that we're in, we have a tremendous capability on, on ver various things that the teams do, uh, in particular connecting with the business. So we've got folks on our team that interact from an audit standpoint with the frontline business. Uh, we've got folks that um, connect and interact with senior management. And then in particular, in some of our roles, we interact with the board. And so you've got an, an incredible organization that has outreach and touch, and to have that influence and the ability to potentially become an agent of change uh, is really quite powerful. You know, we're, we're living in a, uh, a, an era, I've, I've, I've latched onto the word permacrisis, where there's just so much disruption, so much uncertainty, so much ambiguity, so much chaos. It's, it's more important in some ways than ever um, that internal audit be able to help their organizations navigate this kind of environment. And, and so when it comes to being an agent of change, there's one of the things that I say in the book, I talk about the fact that agents of change have to be innovators. They have to have an innovative mindset. How do you, how do you see that and, and what's been your experience in terms of internal auditors as, as being innovative? Yeah, one of the perspectives that I have that I absolutely love to share with everybody, I share with the board, and in fact, I've shared this one slide that I have with the board now for five years and nobody's ever said, hey, get rid of that slide. Right. But that slide has on it uh, three pillars. First is audit, the second is advisory, the third is enterprise risk. And audits are the type of things that we do typically for assurance that uh, are compliance related or maybe operational in nature, mm -hmm. things that help us run the business a little bit better. Uh, the advisory stuff is really more um, uh, consultative, right? Helping the business with perspectives that they might may want or ask us for. And then enterprise risk obviously is risk across the organization. Right. And so those, those three are really important. But the biggest thing for me as I think about all of those things is they provide a level of assurance. Right. And the question is how much assurance do we want to get out of, of those things? And the things that I've shared with the team and the management is really thinking about how do we think about all those things starting with the company's strategic objectives and priorities? Right. Once we have that, we can better understand risk. And as you said this morning, not just the risk, but risk and opportunity really being two sides of the same coin, right. and then ultimately everything you know, stemming from that. So you mentioned enterprise risk. You, uh, you, you, you have that role as well, as I understand, right? Yeah, that's a, it's a great, great question. Yeah. In, my, in our organization, uh, I not only run audit, but also have responsibility for enterprise risk. And right. that's given us a great lens into all of the things that we care about, mm -hmm. not only from a downside risk standpoint, but from an upside opportunity. Right. Uh, we've got approximately 200 risks, 600 mitigating activities, uh, which we constantly update and have conversations on. But the right. biggest thing for us was, how do we have the meaningful conversations and talk about risk in a way that uh, demonstrates value? Right. And it was less about what keeps you up at night mm -hmm. and more about here are the things that, uh, that you want to achieve this year in your function, in your business. Right. Right. And as a part of doing that, how do you measure success? Right. And those conversations were pretty valuable to have and pretty right. fruitful. So instead of asking uh, what keeps you up at night, you're, you're, you're providing sleep remedies, right? <laughs> there you go. All right. So, so this, this idea of internal audit and risk kind of being combined, it's, it's not as unusual as people think. In fact, uh, I think as many as 40% of the Fortune 500 uh, audit departments in this country, uh, the U.S., um, are with the internal audit, the chief audit executive, also has 
has some risk management responsibilities. And so what do you think is the value in that? Um, and how do, how do pairing those two together, how do they really help the organization? Yeah, as I said initially, one of the things that I think internal audit does is have broad reach and broad touch across the organization. And because of that, we have the opportunity to gain perspectives, also create influence. But I think that with the, the enterprise uh, risk function and capability, we can marry the understanding of risk across the organization with the mm -hmm. things that might help us achieve the audit, the advisory, and obviously yeah. ultimately the risk. And so having that viewpoint on risk across the organization helps us think about, as I said before, what level of assurance do we want and how do we then work on those projects that are most meaningful that might right. create the highest impact to the organization. Right. Uh, so we're still working through that. So it's a you know, journey in progress, but uh, ultimately trying to bridge that connected risk view, if you will. So as we, as we think about um, the, the era we're, we're operating in, you know, we've, all, we've obviously got those external factors, but, but one of the big challenges that's starting to emerge, or really conversation pieces, is, is around AI, and, and how can internal audit embrace it, how can it leverage it, um, and potentially what, what threats or risks does it present? What's your view on, on AI when it comes to internal audit? Yeah, I think AI is one of the uh, biggest things to pay attention to as we move forward. Uh, as we think about sort of uh, enterprise risk in the past, mm -hmm. you know, I, and, I, and I love to equate enterprise risk in this utopian view of having this great risk dashboard. Right. And uh, there's this great movie uh, called Along Came Polly uh, with Ben Stiller and Jennifer Aniston. Mm -hmm. And in it, uh, Ben Stiller has this risk analyzer 2000 or something like that. And he puts all of these metrics in and spits out this uh, result that sort of says, you know, what you should do on taking risk. And I sort of joke around about that, but that view in my mind has created this image of having this risk dashboard. And right. wouldn't it be great if we could have that to make better decisions, more real time, more dynamic? In the past 10, 20, 30 years, a lot of that's been static. It's been spreadsheets, it's been interactive one-on-ones, it's been updating things, it's been trying to figure out how do we account for the mitigating activities. But as we move forward, is there now an opportunity to tap into that data, right. use AI, and have the result be much more instantaneous, right. more refreshed, more dynamic. And so that dashboard view now is potentially a reality probably in the next five or 10 years, right. maybe even sooner. You know, we just did a survey and, um, and, and in it we ask um, internal auditors, chief audit executives, why aren't you using AI more? And, uh, and it was a scary number, almost 60% came back uh, and said because we really don't understand it. We really have, we don't, we lack the expertise. What would your, what would your advice be to uh, a chief audit executive who says that and, and, and what advice would you give them in terms of r remedying that? I mean, how, how should they go about um, building some competency and confidence in their ability to use AI? Yeah, I think AI is still emerging and certainly new for all of us, so we're trying to figure that out. But the biggest thing that I see is uh, understanding the difference between automation and machine learning and right. some of the technology capability mm -hmm. with true AI. So right. what, when we're thinking about true AI, do we have the ability to understand the tool or technology so that we can make better decisions? At the end of the day, I think AI has a tremendous capability to help uh, make things run more efficiently, much quicker, get better information faster. Right. But the real value is going to be in mm -hmm. interpreting that and then making a decision. I th so I think there's a human element to using AI, in, which we quite haven't right. figured out. And I'll be honest, I'm in the camp of, I haven't figured that e uh, right. either, or our right. organization hasn't. But I'm very excited to see where this is going to go in the next right. five years. Yeah, so I think what maybe differentiates you from a lot of those, those um, the 60% the who were kind of apprehensive, is it seems like you've got uh, an enthusiastic appetite to learn more about it. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> the enterprise risk certainly helps with that. Yeah. You know, one of the things that uh, we explore in Agents of Change is the idea that uh, one of the four attributes, one of the four characteristics you've really got to have in an internal order to be a change agent is business acumen. Understanding your business, understanding the industry that you operate in. How have you gone about, um, since, since you took on your role, how have you gone about um, really grasping uh, the, the, the industry and the business, and, and what advice would you give somebody who's new into a, an industry and doesn't really have that background? 
Yeah, I, I say it quite simply, and it seems silly when I say it, but it's a hundred lunches, dinners, and drinks. Yes. It's really building the relationships with the individuals that you're right. working with and building that rapport. Because once you have that, then the conversations become easier. Uh, I remember when we first started having some of the conversations around the audit projects that we're doing or the advisory projects. Right. And there was a lot of push and pull and a little bit of uh, challenge on trying to help uh, both of us understand what we're trying to accomplish. Right. Once you have the relationship with the individual, it just becomes much more natural. It becomes easier to pick up the phone and say, hey, we'd love to get your perspective on this. We'd love to work on this project, or we are working on this audit, right. and uh, make that much more seamless. How does, um, how does management, uh, executive management of your company, and how does the board, the audit committee, for example, how do they embrace this idea, or do, are they receptive to the idea of internal auditors as change agents? Yeah, we have a great audit committee chair, uh, and she's been absolutely fantastic and supportive of the things that we are trying to do and trying to accomplish. And so when I mentioned this audit advisory and enterprise risk, uh, when I joined the company five years ago, mm -hmm. uh, several of the folks approached me and said, that's a great perspective, different point of view. And of course, at the time, we were doing all the right things before I joined uh, from an audit capability to make sure that we are uh, providing assurance, being compliant. But I really saw it as an opportunity to talk to management, talk to the board about uh, really expanding that. So they've been absolutely great supporters. I do believe that having great management and board support uh, is really important because they can help drive and propel uh, the function to become an agent of change. And of course, it's not just the function itself. It really takes everybody together, right. working with it together. So we've been through a very uh, tumultuous first half of this decade. We're, we're reaching the halfway point in a few weeks. Um, looking ahead to the second half, I mean, what, what do you think internal audit needs to do to be as successful or hopefully more successful and even more relevant at the end of the 2020s? Yeah, you know what's interesting is that when we think about this uh, first tumultuous time period with COVID and the pandemic, right. Right. Uh, I think about you know, how it changed how we worked. And when I think about that, everybody went virtual instantaneously. Right. And in that virtual environment, I think we learned something, looking back on it now, that we may not still recognize that we learned, which is we learned to value time. Right. And because we learned to value time, we did things more efficiently. So your eight hour day, 10 hour day, however long your day was, became a six hour day because you wanted to make sure that you had time to be able to do the things you want. Go take your kids to events, activities, go to the gym. Right put in the laundry while you have a, have a moment. Mm -hmm. um, all those other things that sort of went away when we went virtual, you know, the commute time got cut down quite a yeah. bit. And so because of that, and that was phenomenal to have that time, I also think it created an intolerance for being inefficient. Right. And so with that, now that we're sort of back in person and many, many folks are going back into the office, right. we as a function have to think about how do we make sure that we value folks' time? And I, I challenge and encourage my team to really think about, um, think about it from the other person's perspective. Mm -hmm. Empathy, I think, is the biggest thing that we could think about as internal auditors right. over the up and coming years and really putting ourselves in their shoes. Because once we're empathetic, uh, there's great partnership, whether it's for audit, whether it's for advisory, whether it's for risk. And then you can have a fruitful conversation right. on the type of assurance, the level of assurance you want to have. It's easier to build trust if they think you, you can put yourself in their shoes, right? Yeah. Well, you said it well many years ago, a trusted advisor. Yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for taking time to join us today. It's, uh, it's always great to catch up with you, and I, I really value your perspectives, having both the audit and risk function, and I look forward to catching up with you again in the future. Well, thank you very much. This has been absolutely great, and I uh, appreciate the time. Good. And I'm Richard Chambers, the Senior Advisor for Risk and Audit at Audit Board. And thank you for joining us.